the one great thing about this hobby is it's constantly testing you to learn new skills and we're going to learn to make balustrades for the pin rail and the first thing I did was to go on YouTube and see how you make full-size balustrades and it was quite instructive so I'm going to use that as a as a guide this is a video about wood turning and in a few short minutes I'm going to teach you everything that I know about wood turning the video is this is carpentry.com by a fantastic fellow called Jed Dixon highly recommended so I'm going to use that as a as a guide and we'll see where it goes from here the problem we have following Ted Dixon's advice is none of the second supports of the piece will work there's simply not enough space and we can't get a steady support in the middle um, because the pieces we're working on are simply too small when I first tried to make them on the lathe I used these skewers I'm not sure where I got them from um, they're clearly not a hardwood um, and it quickly started breaking on me so that wasn't really going to work out so I've cut some juniper blanks and I found a nice piece of wamara I had which is the hardest wood that's available this is my guide and these are, are fairly accurate measurements uh, the key being that from the top to the bottom of the balustrade is one centimeter now we're adding these six lines one two three four oops five and six and we're going to establish those lines on the blank which will act as a guide because those are the critical surfaces that um, that will help us make this piece following on from the advice that we got on youtube we put this little template here on the um, on the guide for the the cutting tools and we are able to establish this cut here this cut here the center of this the deepest part and these two dimensions are actually exactly the same the tools that we're using um, these are some hand gouges that um, or chisels that I have acquired they're the smallest pieces that I have and of course the veneer caliper which is the only instrument that will get down inside these very tight uh, measurement spaces of course having the nicest chisel in the world that's dull makes no sense so we have these um, various stones um, those two plates one is a 4000 and the other one is the 8000 um, and it's absolutely essential that all your tools be as sharp as possible because it's just a waste of time otherwise first job is to, to roughly take the, the piece down to the just above the, the maximum width of the, of the piece that we want to end up with and then we use one of the finest gouges to mark the key spots we're doing the the end um, to the final dimension because as you start to cut the balustrade and these parts get weakened it gets very much harder to do these fine pieces so far out so again we're working from this side coming in simply because um, the strength of the piece is closer to the to the head of the leaf of course the golden rule is less that's more there's no rush to do this so it's a very very delicate touch and hopefully my touch will get better as i go along because i did break um, three of these prior to to this one um, so again i just stress a delicate delicate touch this is try number number four and it's been a learning process and I have to say it's certainly getting there um, we're going to put some sandpaper and clean it up a little bit the bulge is a little big than this one but 
All in all, I am not unhappy with, with how it's come out. I've had so much fun doing these six units, I've decided I'm going to do probably up to 20 and then pick the best six. And all I can say is I keep surprising myself. Um, having spent most of last night learning how to do these uh, balusters, um, and done six very nice ones, uh, we're going to time ourselves just to give you an indication of how long it takes to do one of these. So let's get started. That's 7 minutes, 18 seconds to do one. Um, maybe I get it down to about 5 minutes for one, but all in all, that's not too bad. And once you learn the technique, it keeps getting easier and easier. So don't be afraid like I was, or intimidated by the job. Dive in, and wonderful new experience you're going to have. Now that we're on a roll, we're going to try and make uh, the belaying pins. And we've done the same, follow the same format that we have written it out, done all the measurements, and now just using the veneer caliper, we're going to make our first belaying pin. The one on the left is the one I made, the one on the right is the kit supplied one. I think mine is actually better than the one supplied by the shop. So all in all, um, very very satisfied. I um, There's really nothing that I can't make now um, using the lathe. Um, the key to the whole thing is really just having a very dense, tightly grained wood. The hardest wood that you can get. Um, to make these fine parts and again to start on the outside and work onto the inside. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video as much as I have and I'll see you in the next one.